good morning from the second age of reason. I'm here to bring you some information, something I have noticed from current events and from history. You know they say we're at war. It's the war on terror. And I would write to my Congress people and say, you haven't declared a war. There's no declaration. There's no official thing about it. It's just that you mobilize troops and the president's commanding them willy-nilly here and there, hither and thither. But I also warned, I said, well, every war starts and it has some event that provokes it. So for the war that we have going right now, we have an event. We say, provoke the war, which is 9-11. And then you have to say, the war has a goal. The war has a goal, and at the end of the war, well, the war has to have an ending, doesn't it? Don't they? So I would ask the Congress people, so how do you know the war is over? Who has to sign the treaty? Who surrenders? Who surrenders to who? So, I ask these sort of questions. And um, also saying, well, there's a huge amount of expenditure there. They don't even call it defense anymore. It's called military. So it covers more than just defense. And I don't know if the reaction is proportional to the provocation. You know, knock down two buildings and it kills 3,000 people. How many hundreds of thousands have had to die because of it? Is that a worthy revenge? Is the revenge over yet? Or is it a, if it's actually a war, who has to surrender? And what do they sign? What are the conditions? What are the spoils of the war? The reparations? So, people are expecting this, maybe, in the back of their minds because it's part of history. But I think they've missed something. They've missed something very important. They're looking for this document in the future. And maybe it's not in the future. The document's in our past. I think I know which document it is now. I don't know if you've noticed, but our Constitution, which we revere, and our government officials take an oath to defend our Constitution, that it seems as though it's kind of under attack, or at least it's being ignored. You know, like your freedom of speech in the press. The press is no longer free. They're the lapdogs of the government. They are guided into what to t to stories to tell. So, that's that. Then there is um, the, f the freedom of association. The freedom to keep and bear arms. Those, those are freedoms, those are rights. And rights come, they say, um, endowed by their creator. Who's our creator? Is it our mother? Is it our government? I think when they said create or they meant some other supreme being. And by usurping these unalienable rights, I believe that they have put themselves above and in front of the creator. So that's something I think bears mind to. I don't know if you've noticed, but Congress has been passing law after law after law that should be clearly unconstitutional, but nobody does anything about it. And even the Supreme Court, which is supposed to strike down laws that are unconstitutional or not, in regards to your Fourth Amendment and due process, they've thrown it out the window. So when the government behaves that way, all I can conclude is that there has been a surrender document of some sort that has been signed and put into effect. And I'll tell you what, is, what it is. 
The surrender document is the Patriot Act. That was probably one of the key documents in the series. There's maybe more than one of such documents and laws like the NDAA and the NDRP. This is what happens when your nation has been defeated. When the, the real conquerors are taking away your rights. They are destroying your economy systematically. And what do conquerors do? They take the spoils of war. I had seen a rant by Dean Radigan talking about this massive extraction out of America of trillions and trillions of dollars. And he's wondering, well, what is anybody going to do about it? They're not going to do anything about it because it's part of the tribute that has to be paid to the conquerors. Don't you get it? It's as clear as day. America has been defeated. America is now slowly folding up the vestiges of its old republic, of its old freedoms, and putting in the new tyranny of the new conquerors. You don't even use real American money anymore. You use Federal Reserve notes. Federal Reserve notes are not from the government. They're issued by the conquerors. So you're using conqueror script. I just thought I'd let you know. At least it's still in a cash form at this point. The whole process is going on at the moment of conquering. And if you don't realize it, well, someday you will when it's too late, just like those people in other totalitarian systems. You still have a little while to do it. And I realize people are complaining about the vote. Because if they vote, it gives tacit approval to the system that you are participating in the system. You are supporting the system. And, but on the other hand, you can say, well, if I don't vote, what chance is there that anything good will come of it? But you can't get anything good to come of it if all they offer you as choices are terrible, horrible, uh, totalitarian choices. And anyone that offers anything else is silenced or marginalized or eliminated. So, I just thought I would give this bit of information to you so you do that the reason things look so rotten all the time and why do they pass all these unconstitutional laws is they're not bound by the Constitution anymore. That to them is just um, a procedure, a ritual they go through so that you think it's still in effect. They are essentially like General Pétain of Vichy France and our government is a Vichy government who is only the proxies for the actual conquerors. The conquerors who are laughing. Laughing is they don't have anything to worry about now. They have what they want. A government bought and paid for. It gives them everything they need. Everything they want and more. So, that's how I see it at this point. I want to vote and I want to say something. So I'll probably, if I do vote, I'll be voting green. Because the Democrat-Republican dictatorship is out of here, as far as I'm concerned. You know, if they no longer respect my First Amendment rights, if they no longer respect the Fourth Amendment and due process, if they no longer respect people's right to defend themselves, or to grow their own food, or to the rights of their private property, they no longer represent me. They no longer rep represent the Constitution to which I'm proud to say that I'm a, I consider that to be the governing document. But if they no longer really follow it anymore, then they no longer really represent my government. They're not my government. So, I don't know what to do, because now I'm in an occupied country, and the freedoms, well, you still have some. You could still speak up, and we'll see where it goes. But the plan seems to be pretty much totalitarian. Once they take away the cash and make it all electronic, then they have you completely. 
they they'll possess all the possibility of money and buying and selling will be under their total and absolute control. Your living or your dying will be under their total and absolute control. Once things have moved from being totally hand manual to be totally cybernetic e space. So I'm just putting these forward so that you don't get fooled into certain things. And I even give a, a word of warning to, you know, the occupies around the world. There's a temptation to unite and become one giant thing. One giant thing is exactly what the establishment wants, because one giant thing can then be crushed. Keep your independence. So until later, we'll be seeing it.